blessing us. And God, as we go into this class, touch our mind that we receive revelation, illumination, that God in full understanding. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, so Charles Watson is Dr. Bohannon, it looked like. Okay. I gotta change my name. I changed my name. <laughs> okay, Charles. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, so praise God, everybody. We do thank God for you. Thank God for seeing you again. And we are recording at this time. This is week number four of studying them church history. This is the week that we are also prepare for our mid-test. So, and then in preparing for our mid-test, many times this may be... Uh, I would call the lesser class because it's more about reviewing than learning. Um, and so uh, tonight I want to just slightly in review, go back over week three, just a little teeny bit. Make sure you have these things in your note that I'm getting ready to address. Make sure you know who Pla uh, Plato and Aristotle, uh, who are they in their relationship one to another. That should be in your notes, okay? Um, also, uh, who is uh, Alexander the Great and his relationship with Aristotle? That should be in your notes. I, I, I may be talking a little fast. That's why you'll get a chance to read, listen to the video after we post it later, okay? Now, one of the things we brought out about Jesus, that he was not the first son of a god. Okay, um, and we mentioned about others last week that were sons of God. Zeus was one. Um, we mentioned that he was what made him different was the fact that he was the first son of a God that was poor. All the other sons of God were wealthy. Okay, so um, we brought up that. Um, now, the other thing we brought up the word ecumenical, um, and uh, we Broke down the definition of that. So that should definitely be in your notes. And because that is definitely on the test, you will definitely see that word uh, on the test. We talked about the Hellenistic Jews. Uh, that may be on your test. Um, and so, um, so those are just some of the things from last week that may be on your test. Is there anything from last week that it, does anyone have a question, comment, or statement for, before we go into this week's lesson? Uh, Dr. Short, are you going to have, um, so I didn't hear you mention, a uh, common era? No. And um, what we talked about. Um, right. I think because we had it in our last lesson and, and they should have the inner notes, I will say to everyone, that's something you should know. I think I mentioned it last week or week before last that you should understand that, but I'm not going to say it's going to be in the test. The test is pretty, most of the test is made already, but it's something I do expect everybody to know because what may not be in this test could possibly be in the final test. So I would say definitely know that because this is the second time the National School of Theology brought this up through our students and teachers, okay? So that means it's important to know. And anyone else or anything else? What else did you mention, Overseer? I think you mentioned one other thing besides the BCE and what else did you mention, if you did? Um, no, just right that minute I uh, and, uh, mentioned that, but I know you want us to know Koine Greek. Yes, that, yes, that. That definitely, that definitely should be on in your notes. Matter of fact, that's the second time that came up because when we uh, were studying New Testament Greek, that came up. So everyone should be getting familiar. As I said to you many times before, once you stay in school, there are things that's going to come up multiple times. If you don't get it the first time, don't worry about it because you're going to hear it again. You heard me say that. If you're doing me for six months or more, you heard me say that. If you don't get it now, don't stress it because it's coming up again. And we're, we're seeing that even in this course because our last few other courses, apologetics, uh, understanding New Testament Greek, hermeneutics, and uh, ex uh, biblical exegy. All these courses can be connected, okay? So um, is there anyone else that has anything that they want to address that possibly could be on the test? You, you may want to know, and I'll let you know if it's gonna possibly be on the test or not. As Dr. I said, Short. Our, yes, Dr. Rose. Will, will any of the apostolic fathers be on the test? 
right as of right now, none of them are on the test, and the test is 90% complete. And so what I may add on the test will come from tonight's class. I will say this, if there is going to be uh, apostolic father, it will probably come out of chapter five, which we will review a little teeny bit of that tonight, chapter five, which was to be in your reading. So it may be just a couple of them. Um, none of the women that we discussed last week will be on the test at this time. Again, but those things that I say that will not be on the test, possibly could be in the final test. So you still want those things in your notes. Okay, anyone else? What might come up, what might not be on this test, but another is good to have in our notes is pat patrology or uh, patristics. Um, I thought that those were great words that came from this chapter. Uh, the study chapter of five? Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, well, go ahead, Nancy. Go ahead. Go oh, ahead. just just the words patrology or patristics. I'm sure we'll get to it when we go through chapter five. But um, uh, the study of uh, church fathers, and then it gave us uh, the dates in which most of them lived uh, okay. between the end of the Apostolic Age and the Council of Chalcedon. And so, I just thought those were really good words that we should note down: patrology or patristics. Right, I think they're in the book as well. Um, but also, uh, now I will tell you this: those words will not be in in this test. Um, I'm I'm pretty sure of that. Matter of fact, I don't intend to get into chapter five deep at all tonight. I just want to touch on it because I got I have a plan for chapter five, especially those of you that are on the masters and the doctoral level. You're gonna be well. Let me go right into it since we're talking chapter five. Chapter five, we're gonna go into lightly tonight. But I need the notes if you're working on your masters and working on your doctorate, or already have your doctorate, working on a PhD or whatever you're doing. I need to see your notes. I want your notes to be so clean and so clear, okay, that I'm salivating over your notes. I need to see the notes as though you're gonna teach chapter five. Chapter five is so full of great information. Mm -hmm. I want to that those of you that are on the doctorate and master level are getting the goodies that's there. I need to see that, okay? So I need you to hand it up. If you're on the master's and doctor level, I need to see five. I'm loving five more than any. Okay, coming in. Uh, uh, so I need to see that note, okay? So uh, again, we may hit it lightly tonight, but again, I'm looking for your notes. Now, let me say this also. Masters and doctor students, your notes on chapter five will be a part of your grade for the mid test. So I need to have that no later than Monday. Chapter five notes, I need to have no later than Monday. That is a part of your test. So that means I need to see ABCs, one, two, three. I need to see captions, headings. I, 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 again, as though you're writing, your notes should almost look like a book page one, page two, page three, after you go that far, it needs to be exquisite. Exquisite notes on chapter five, as though you're teaching. This is for, if you're not on the master's level, don't worry about it. These are for our, our future doctors, okay? This is their work, a, a part of their test. And you can do it, but I won't look at it, okay? I'm, I, I'm just, <laughs> you can do it. I got enough to do. <laughs> Painfully honest. Okay, so let's right. okay, so let's get moving, okay? Because um okay, um now let's go over the, one of the homework assignments. Uh I'm gonna start off with Reverend Dr. Uh, Norman Davis. Give us some of uh, the um, names of the council meetings that's not ecumenical. All right, I can do that with the pre uh, pre ecumenical ones. Yes, sir. Just yes, do sir. About three, just do about three for me, because everybody else is going to drop, drop a one or two in. God bless right. you, uh, Elder Dina Brown. The Council of Rome, the Council of Ephesus, Ephesus, and the Council of Carthage. Okay. Uh, someone else that may have, I'm not calling no more names. I just knew that pastor was ready. Anyone else like to give us a, a, a few names? I would. Yes, uh, overseer. Um, the Council of Antioch, 264. The Council of Arabia, uh, 264 to 2, um, I'll say 264. The Synod of Elvira 
of 306. Uh, okay, stop right there. Anyone else would like to add three more? Uh, the second Lathan Council of the year 1139. Okay. Anyone else like to add another one? Uh, someone new? Uh, the Council of Trent. Okay, yes. Anyone? Well, ask, give me one more. I just, I just need one more. The Council of Lions. Mm -hmm. I spell that, please. L-Y-O-N-S. <laughs> okay, L-Y-O-N-S. Okay, thank you. Now, someone uh, besides Overseer, give me just a light summary. Yes, Overseer. Someone besides Overseer. I don't want to. I don't want you to get hoarse. Okay, someone besides Overseer, give me why nice. these are not. Mm -hmm. Yes, Doc. Who said that? Who was talking when I was talking? Yeah. Okay, all uh, right. I need someone just to give me a, a, a overview of why these are not ecumenical council meetings, Doctor Bohannon. Because they're not because they do not have a a, a, a variety of, of like bishops have to have different different uh, people from different areas. That's why they aren't. Okay. Anyone? Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> yes, Doctor Davis. Right None there. of the councils of this period were representatives from all of the Christian churches. They were, uh, they were only from without, throughout the Roman Empire. Awesome. OK, so make sure you have that information, both those information. Anyone else can add anything different than what those two added? Now, this information may be on your test, so make sure you have it. Make sure you have the two reason, two main reason why these uh, Council meetings were not ecumenical, okay? So, and it may be on your test. Now, again, if it's not on this one, it will be on the next one. Okay, uh, let's move on. Um, uh, we did ask um, to take a look at Peter, and I'm, I probably gave you too much homework, but that's okay. I know you uh, have it. Okay, now, Peter, again, we did talk about it a little bit, and maybe I could actually skip this, because we... I'm going to skip uh, the assignment I mentioned about about Peter. Um, okay, let's go to. Did you make a sound about Peter? Say it again. I have it in my. Did notes. you make a? Did you give us a sound about Peter? I, I have, have it written down. Maybe if I just you don't have it, it, don't worry about it. I, if you don't have it, because I have it down in my notes, but <laughs> so I probably mentioned it and. and uh, put it probably put it in the wrong section. Does anyone have anything concerning uh, Peter? Looking up Peter. The first bishop of Rome. Is that again? The first bishop of Rome. We yeah, I see the first bishop of Rome. Um, okay, but let, let's, let's let's move on from Peter for right now. Okay, let's talk about the the, the Church of Nicaea. I mean, excuse me, the Council meeting of Nicaea. So I want to break that down, and what are some of the things that this council meeting discussed? This is crucially important. This more than likely will not be in the mid test, but definitely be in the final test. Doctor Short. Yes, uh, Pastor this is, Drummond. Uh, this is Pastor Drummond. Um, it says here that uh, when I looked it up, the first council meeting of Nicaea was the Council of Christian Bishops convened in Bithyrian, the city of Nicaea, which is located in Turkey, by the Roman Empire uh, Constantine in AD 325. The meeting was established to um, adhere to quality, equality of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and the Holy Trinity, and asserted that only the Son became incarnated as Jesus Christ. And it was to address the entire body of believers to resolve uh, controversy and isms and schisms that were in the body of Christ. Awesome. Uh, I'm, gonna ask, I, I'm gonna ask anyone this. Uh, well, first, before I do that, uh, is there anyone else would like to add to what Pastor Drummond just read? There was like 318 bishops that participated. Wow. Anyone else? Um, I did. The first yeah, the ecumenical conference. No, let's one of them. Okay, Pastor Wright, what you say? I said it was the first ecumenical conference. Right. Uh huh. Anyone okay. else, Pastor Overseer? Somebody else was going to speak. Doctor Rose. 
Um, well, I was going to say that you know that there were 21 ecumenical mm -hmm. um, council meetings. Yeah. Right, but I want to I want to focus on what was in this meeting. Okay. One of the problems to be solved in this meeting was Arianism. It okay. was a heresy proposed by Arius of Alexandria. And what this heresy talked about was it affirmed that Christ was a created being. And so this heresy was causing a lot of problems. Um, and so what they did as they kind of debated this, they came up with a creed which included incorporated a word homoousius and homoousius dr drummond was uh, uh pastor drummond was talking about it uh homoousius means substance into one uh meaning that there was equality with the son and the father and they ended up condemning um alexander they they ended up con condemning arius even though some of them didn't want to because he was spreading this very dangerous heresy um, that Christ was not, was a created being um, and, and was not uh, the, the son of God. Okay, I want to ask a question. Is, is this in chapter five? No, no, no. This, I didn't no, get this from chapter, chapter, I didn't get this from chapter five. Okay. It asked us to, um, yeah, to, right. to find out about the council of, of Nicaea. Right. And this was one of, or Arianism was one of the issues that they were debating about. Okay. But anyone else in reading chapter five, did you see that this um, meeting, uh, did they talk about the council of Nicaea in chapter five at all? No one read that? Okay. No problem. No problem. No problem. Okay. Um, Okay, anyone else concerning this council meeting? What else stood out? What else did they have to deal with? The, the text ended with, with uh, anathemia, an, an, what is, an, an, anathemus. As you're talking about, it was against the Arian's proposition. But the word anathemus meant a formal curse by a pope or a council of the church excommunicating the person or denouncing the doctrine. And that was dealing with the Nicene, uh, with the, uh, Nicene, Nicene Creed. Okay, okay. Um, this is okay. Now, um, as far as okay, this meeting is concerned, I want to talk about. Uh, let's take a look at what they just what they were discussing, the various things that they that the issues that they were having. Now, those issues that they were having were amongst over three hundred different churches, I believe that was. Uh, that was there in that meeting. Now, uh, I'm asking, has any of you in the denomination that you're in ha had uh, any church meetings where all of your denominations came together to discuss issues? I mean, just raise your hand for those of you that has been a part. Uh, I'm raising my hand. Okay, to discuss various issues. Okay, I'm going to mention mine. You can put your hand down. Thank you, guys. Okay, because Again, uh, unless you've been a part of one, you may not experience the atmosphere that takes place when you have a lot of bishops. I was 25 years old my first time. I was in uh, a meeting with 500 bishops from across the country that was a part of the denomination that I was in at that time. I was a, I was a pastor of a congregationalist church. So the, all the congregations from almost the Eastern Shore, pretty much all over the country, met in one huge church. It was about 500 bishops, and they were there to discuss one thing. Was it uh, okay? Were they going to legal, legalize or to accept uh, homosexuals as um, licensed <laughs> preachers? Or were they, were they going to accept homosexuals behind the pulpit? So all the churches came together to discuss this. And... Um, it was something for me to experience how each one came up there and gave who they were, where they were from, how many years they've been preaching. I've been a bishop, I've been a pope, I've been a this or that. And, uh, and I had an opportunity to speak and I raised my hand and I went up there and said, look, I've only been pastor in six months. <laughs> I wasn't a pope, I wasn't a, I wasn't a pope, but I knew what the word of God spoke against homosexuality and saints, oh, I'm Lord, let me settle down, students. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got a standing ovation. <laughs> I, I, they gave me a stand 
standing, I was 26 years old when I got my first standing ovation with over 500 bishops. And it was because I quoted the word. Most of them were quoting, you know, their, their, their how long they've been a bishop. But I went straight to the word of God and left. Look, only been for six months. So has anyone else would like to share what was your church meeting discussing? What were they debating? And how was it handled? Uh, Dr. Short. Yes. Ours uh, were, this Pastor Drummond, was discussed whether they were going to let the women start wearing pants or not. Wow. Um, we, I was in an <laughs> apostolic Pentecostal denomination at that time, and uh, the women wanted to start wearing pants. And uh, they had a big discussion. They used the scripture, don't wear things pertaining to a man. And uh, they asked, mm. I, was, I was pastoring. Um, just not too long pastoring, maybe a few years I was pastoring. And I told him, I said, that's not pertaining to him. If you buy women's clothes and you're a woman, then you're wearing women's garment. Now, if I go in the men's section and I put on men's clothes, then I got, a, then there's an issue. But, um, and they finally did after a while, it didn't happen right away. But, but after a, a couple of years, they allowed the women to wear pants. Um, but that was a big thing in the apostolic and Pentecostal movement at that time. Awesome. They didn't want us to wear pants. Yeah. yeah. Okay, anyone else? And we're not discussing on these things now. I'm just want to hear about it. I'm not, we're not going to get into it. <laughs> anyone else would like to discuss uh, what happened in your meetings? Yes. Okay, Pastor, yeah, Pastor Wright. Um, it was an um, interdenominational fellowship. And they were discussing whether to allow Jesus only into the denominational fellowship, interdenominational fellowship. And the Trinities were having difficulty accepting the Jesus only. And it was a big debate going on back and forth because our bishop was accepting of all God's churches. But you had people because of, you know, how they believed they did not want to interact with others. Wow. Okay. Can I just ask, I'm really interested, just yes or no, did they, did they accept Jesus only? No. The, the, the interdenominational fellowship actually broke up because of all the division. Hmm. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. then, it, wow. Okay. And, and I'm glad you brought that up because can you can, can you imagine 300 mm -hmm. churches coming together and uh, when they don't agree, what will possibly mm -hmm. can happen? And what Pastor Wright brought up is more than likely what happened is division. So now you're probably getting a, 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 a peek into why we have so many different denominations now. Because mm -hmm. at those meetings, they never came to an agreement. And so there are so many splits begin to take place. So, so we're going to stop right there. Let's quickly go into chapter five. And we're going to almost be done. Dr. Short. Yes, a man of God. Um, uh, even at that council of Nicaea, and I, and I read that it was a legend, but uh, but uh, uh, the Saint uh, Nicholas, I guess he was a bishop at that time. He supposed to have slapped um, Arenas across the face account because of what he was saying about Christ. Wow! Wow! Mm -hmm. So it was, it's almost <laughs> like it was a church <laughs> fight, <laughs> even at Nicaea. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Well, I I've only witnessed a church fight once, and but I've heard about multiple ones, and they do take place. So uh, while we're discussing this, this is important because I want to see it. You know, people think it was just a little nice, sweet meeting, and you know, and everybody went amen, kumbaya, and all that stuff. But more mm. likely, it was a whole lot of various things mm. going on behind the scenes. Uh, anyone else before we Dr. go? Short, I have a, yes. I, I have a question. Uh, my internet went out, but I just wanted to know, did you all discuss the other things that was, were discussed at the meeting? The other uh, three things that they discussed? Was that brought uh, up? You, you can go ahead. We did discuss a few things, but go ahead. Bring it up. Uh, so we'll so have it on the recording. What do you have? Well, I was, I was, I was going to discuss that. Did, uh, did, did you discuss how uh, Easter got his official name? Did you talk about that? 
No. The official no. date and also talk about and also the canons, the council established a set of 20 regulations, agreements, various things such as baptism, uh, communication, and how to treat people who left and they face under persecution. These people were known as lapses. These church laws were also known as canons. And some scholars debate whether or not the council determined the biblical canon as well, but there are no solid evidence that they did. So I, I had found that out and also talked about how they came up to the conclusion of gave our Easter a official date. Since Jesus was crucified shortly after the Passover, early Christians relied on the Jewish lunar calendar to determine when to celebrate its resurrection. And so after a couple hundred years, some Christians began to doubt the Jewish calendar's reliability and contemporary to Jew, Jews ignorance which threw off the lunar calendar. Some Christians wanted to create a new calendar that followed the Jewish calendar, but accounted for the equinox. Not everyone agreed though. I'm reading fast because I know you got to go. So I, I read it, but this is what I did find out. They did not only discuss the, uh, uh, talked about the, um, the first thing we talked about, which was Arianism. And also we are also, following that meeting, I found out that uh, he was excommunicated. They excommunicated Aaron from the uh, fellowship. But later on, he was brought back in to the fellowship. So it was a constant debate. I just wanted to bring that out because I, 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 I apologize. No, 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 it, it's okay, it's okay. Now, this is what I do want to do, okay? I, those of you that are not on the master's and doctorate level, I would like for you to send me your notes on that. I'd like you to, on the meeting, uh, the Church of Nicaea, I want you to send me your notes and you're going to be graded on your notes. I need to know, break down. You heard some of what was the meeting about. I need you to break down in detail what the meeting was about in that council meeting. If you are not on the master's and doctor level, uh, again, I need that from you. Master and doctor, you already have yours. You're doing pretty much all chapter five, okay? And that has to be done. I need that in uh, as soon as possible. And your test is going to be easy. Um, but th these two homework assignments will pretty much be half of your, pretty much half of your grade. I'm going to really be detailed about your work. I will uh, respond to each one of you about your homework sent in, what I liked, what I didn't like. You will probably see uh, more uh, response from me in this that, than at any other time that we uh, have been together. So now um, I'm, I'm having an issue because my computer is getting ready to die. My war is, um, so I, I can go on my phone. I think that's, Okay, I can go on my phone. Okay, I'm good. Um, okay, let's go to chapter five real quick. And I want to get into just a little bit, the book and the parchments. Um, I did highlight a few things. Oh boy. Because I'm kind of wondering, do... I'm looking at I'm looking at it right now. I don't have it pulled up where you guys can see it, but um, okay. There is nothing in chapter five that will be on the test. I, I'm pretty much sure of that now. Okay, nothing. In, you will not have to look up for no answers in chapter five. There will be. Okay, now I just want to ask this. Uh, for those of you that did your notes already on chapter five, because this was a part of your homework assignment, I would like to hear what you have on your notes at this time in your book, please. In chapter five. I'll go first. Yes, please. All right, Dr. Short. Yes, go ahead, Dr. Bohan. I, 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 what I like about, okay, on page 75 in location uh, 1193. Yes. The characteristics of apostolic fathers. I like it because they said the utterance was informal, the statements were simple, but sincere in faith. And they show evidence of the philosopher's training in pagan philosophy that no one notices in the writing. So what I like about this, it references the Old Testament, they learned heavy support and ideas for one reason. Uh, the Christianity was considered uh, distinct from Judaism. Doctrine, ethics, and obedience to the church leaders was empathized, emphasized. These men were adequate with literary form of the New Testament and use them as models. Pastor and practical edification of the church stand above all else as a major objective of the writing. So I like, I like the characteristics of the apostolic fathers. That's, that's part of my notes. Okay, anyone else? Did I see a hand being raised? I just need you to read some of your notes from chapter five. 
Um, Dr. Short, this is Pastor Drummond. Oh, it's um, yeah, it's Pastor Drummond. The fathers of the church talked about um, that the fathers which were given were the bishops, those that have uh, authority or rule in the church, they set order. Um, it talked about the Council of Chalcedon, 451, uh, and uh, when it was held, and what was the extent of the meeting, and uh, also we talked about it. Uh, looked up the emperors, the different emperors that it talked about. It talked about the apostolic fathers, uh, how they uh, there was a disruption in the church. Um, and uh, uh, Clement of Rome uh, set order uh, in the church of Cor Corinthian and uh, uh, okay, let's stop, I, I can stop okay. right there. Um, I don't okay. want to want to say, oh, well, they read everything. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, Overseer can give us a little teeny bit <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so the the work that you had us do about uh, researching the Council of Nicaea was really interesting because it coincided with what the book said. It talked about how the church fathers wrote, uh, and this takes us back to some other classes, they wrote a uh, polemic and apologetic literature yes. because mm -hmm. they were under such heretic pressure. There were many heresies happening mm -hmm. in the church just like I brought up um, about the heresy by Arianism, by Arius. And so what the fathers did was they came up with creeds, right? Like the creed that I talked about that, that uh, came up with homoousius. And so the yeah. fathers, I'm sorry? Somebody was saying something? So homoousius. And so it talked about in chapter five, right there, as it talked about how they would come up with these creeds, when they would interact with these heresies, they would have to write their rebuttals. And these rebuttals turn into creeds that would combat all of these different heresies that were always popping up in the church. We know Paul talked a lot about uh, combating heresy. And so I really like that, the thought of them, you know, constantly, you know, writing these polemic and apologetic literature combating all of these heresies. So I thought that was really interesting. Okay, yes, yeah, so we're, right, we're right there. That I had this highlighted. Uh, I, what I was thinking about doing that everything I have highlighted, you definitely want to uh, research it and look at it. Um, but um, we're doing something different now. So, but um, as what was she brought up was the fact that we talked about in a previous class in apologetics about polemic again can someone give us again go back a couple of classes what is apologetics and what is polemic um dr short uh, someone is... beside you pastor drummond <laughs> thank okay. you okay only been with us three courses but uh okay anyone else what is well, apologetics ap ap Apologetics is defending the faith. Defending the faith, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. what is polemic? Person engages in controversial debate. Okay, so your your it's one is pretty much offense and one is pretty much defense. Defense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so we're gonna stop right here because the rest of this is gonna be your assignment. Going over assignment again, it's just one simple assignment and your test is going to be given to you no later than Sunday. So you have tonight, tomorrow, Saturday to uh, to finish doing what you've already done. A master's and doctor students is, is type it up in, in a, a form which I can fully understand that is teachable, breaking things down um, and making sure that. At the end of your homework assignment, various words and, and your all your words and definitions that need to be known are at the end of your notes. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. At the end of your notes, put that at the end, okay? Now, again, um, those of you that are not doing that, you are doing the church, um, a better breakdown of the church on IC and all the things that they were debating and discussing, put that in order. This is just a council meeting, uh, 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 the Nicaea uh, council meeting, that's it. And But everybody's taking the test. The test 
will not go any further than chapter four. And I and very little of it is in chapter four. Most of it is uh, class discussion and should be in your notes because I, I constantly throughout the whole process put this in your notes. We've done, done two or three reviews already. So uh, we're, we're not doing any more reviews. We're done with reviews. Uh, so is there any last question, comment, or statement before we get ready to uh, dismiss? I have a comment. Yeah. Yes, please. Dr. Short. Yes, Dr. Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it. Is it Inac, I-G-N? I know we're supposed to know the words. Okay, you already said that. Dr. Short, know well, we're all struggling with these words, but go ahead. <laughs> I G N A T I S. Um, I, I'm trying to find it where I think I remember. Ignatius. 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 I, just, I, I found it to be interesting on the on the last the, the last part where he where they talked about him. The um. There it is. Yeah. He was the first person. He was the first person, which I think is very important. He was the first person to actually mention the word Catholic. Yes. 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 And the word Catholic, we already talked about what the word Catholic means. And that may be on your test. What does the word Catholic mean? Universal. 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 Okay, so good. All right, so if everybody uh, answer the rest of the questions, again, the test is not hard. Uh, more than likely, your hardest grade is how well you send me the, how well those notes look, how detailed those notes are, and make sure your your term, your words, definition, terminology, and all that is at the end of your notes. Okay. And so, I have a question. Yes, please. I, I, I know you. I know you're getting tired of me saying. No, talking, no, but anyway. no, no, I'm, I'm doing my job. Okay. So what? Are, what? Doctor uh, Rose and myself. What are we doing? Um, you're doing the, whatever the masters and the doctors are doing. Okay, then. All right. Okay. But I thought you said those who are working on their masters and doctors. We already, we yes, have already. But, you, I'm just, but you jumped in this class. We're going to so. fall in line with this. We're, we're, in, this class, we're in this class and we need to learn. It's, it's not evident. Yeah, this, this is for, at the end of the day, it's for your benefit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I understand. Yeah. I just want to get yeah. a clarity of what, can you repeat what we're supposed to do? We're working on the council now, see? No, that, that's for those that are not masters or on the masters and doctor level. They're doing the study of uh, the, uh, the, the council meeting and they're breaking it down the different debates, discussions, uh, arguments, uh, events that took place in that meeting. All the major events, topics, subjects that took place, they're going to break it down, make it look real neat. Oh, to we're outlined chapter five. I got you. Outline chapter five. Okay. And you're the outline Correct. chapter five. Yes. Okay. So Dr. That, Short. Yes, sir. Um, the things you have highlighted, this is the thing we need to concentrate on pertaining to the test. No, no, I'm showing okay. you this is chapter five. This will not be on the test. Okay. Okay. Uh if that be it, well, thank, thank you. And we will uh be sending the test out no later than Sunday. More than likely, you'll be seeing it on Saturday. And uh, if you have any questions, give me a call on tomorrow. Love you much. God bless you. May I have a smile upon you. Let's pray out. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for all you've done, all you're doing. Thank you, God, for what we have learned tonight, what we study on tonight. And God bless us. We go forward in this mid-test, dear God, and beyond. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. God bless you. May I have a smile upon you. And we'll see you. Good night. God bless. Good night, everyone. Good night. 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 Good night.